This is Woody from Obadiah's. Um, this here, if you're wondering, is going to be a filtration system, a secondary filtration system that is uh, <clears throat> going to have some UV lights in here. And so not only are you going to have ultraviolet lighting, but ozone, copper and silver ions for the water purification. So I shouldn't need to use any chemicals inside here. Um, folks, you need to start thinking. When you're in a hot tub, it's hot, 104 degrees. Your pores are open. You're absorbing the chemicals. The chlorine that's in that water is absorbed into your body, into your bloodstream. It's really, really bad for you. So something to think about. Try to go natural. Um, you know, chlorine bleach used to be used in World War One as a mustard gas. So. Um, try not to breathe the fumes. You're sitting in the hot tub breathing all that chlorine gas coming off the top of it. So there's lots of ways to purify water. Um, one is ozone, another is silver ions, another is UV rays, of course filtration. So you want to have a lot of filtration. These are two-speed pumps. They can run on high and low. They're set up on a timer. It'll cycle itself. Um, it's going to run two hours a day. Very important that your hot tub generates and runs every day for at least an hour, preferably two. And what that does is circulates the water, pulls everything through the system. The UV and the ultraviolet and the ozone kill the bacteria that forms overnight. And so when you get in there, it's nice and fresh and clean. So you can't just have one of these sitting with 104 degrees temperature with a lid on it and not expect bad things to grow in it so very important water purification as you can see essentially what we have are skimmers this is a skimmer it mounts on the inside of the hot tub like that and what it does is it sucks the oils you can see some oil floating down there on the water that's I don't know what that is, but uh, anytime you take the lid off on a hot tub, you're going to have bugs and hair and, you know, people in here. So what happens is you get a scum line around the tub, and it's all the way around the edge. When you put in a skimmer, it takes that scum line out because it sucks that scum down through the hole, through these sides and these things. And then this fitting here... This unscrews and goes in the middle of that, which screws to that, and that goes through the hot tub and then connects into the suction line. So basically the water is traveling when this is all hooked up. You can see the gap the hole in the back this is in there like this the water sucks through the front and around the edge and kind of skims it well I'm putting in three of them um, I've got 20 jets in here 20 some jets 10 horsepower so um, I'll be skimming a lot of water um, it's just I don't like stuff floating on my water, so it makes everything stay cleaner. So at least put one skimmer in your hot tub. But anyhow, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take a hole saw on our drill and drill our hole, put our fitting in the hole, put it all together, and hook up the skimmers to the intake line right there, which runs to the pump, to the suction side where the strainer is. That strainer, you want to, if you're putting in a hot tub, make sure you get a pump with a strainer. In the wintertime, we have, you know, pine needles and stuff falling, so acorns. Whatever ends up in the tub will suck through that, get caught in that strainer before it goes to the filter. The strainer gets the big stuff, the filter gets the little stuff. <clears throat> so, essentially we have, that's the intake. There's a, another intake on the bottom. They, two lines go to one right at the pump you always want to feed them as close to the pump as you can 
and that special fitting there with the two like that will make this pump rock and roll. Um, it will have very little problem drawing water. It can only pump as much as it can draw. Very important. So anyhow, you come out with two inch fittings, everything is split up. So that's where we're going to connect to. The other object behind splitting it is if somebody's hair got caught in that strainer, in the skimmer, it's going to suck the rest of the water off the bottom. It won't lock you to the wall. Uh, many kids have drowned. So that's why if you see a hot tub that I do, it's got extra, probably can't see them in the dark down there, but there are other um, strainer intakes. There's one in the middle. So if one gets plugged with somebody's hair, you know, some kid gets under the seat diving down and gets sucked in there, all he's got to do is pull away from it because it's going to be sucking from the other one too. So there's no chance of a vacuum lock. Okay, as you can see, there's the fitting as it comes out. And the other piece screws to that. As I said, it says a two and a half inch hole saw. I use a smaller one and it's a better fit. So, you know, test the hole saw when you're doing this. Here's your fitting on the inside that'll get sucked down and then the strainer mounts to this. Now, what I want you to really understand is I started my hole from the outside. I drilled a pilot hole first in the center all the way through. Took my hole saw and then I started on this side, went almost through. I stopped, you can almost see the ring right here, the edge where my finger is where I stopped. Then I went from the inside, and I could see my pilot hole. My pilot hole, there's the bit. So there's your inside, and there's your outside. You can see it's two different colors. So I went back through the inside and drilled my hole. As you can see, I was real close, a little bit of a burr, but if you just drill a hole straight through, you'll blow the whole side out, all the splinters, and so it's very important you drill from both sides. That's a trick. you got to know to do this, otherwise you'll have rips and the splinters and the wood, and it won't seal, and it looks like hacks. So. so what we did is we drilled our holes. I showed you how to do that. And everything is just test fitted right now. It's, it comes apart. So if you're going to do plumbing on a hot tub, it's pretty important to take and put it together, dry fit it first, cut all of your, your parts long. Don't cut them, don't put them to the edge and then mark them. You want to have, it's got to go in another inch and a half into the fitting. So that's a common mistake. Um, so there's what we're going to connect to. What we're doing here is we're connecting the skimmer to the suction line, to the pump, through the strainer, and then into the system. From here it goes through the filter. There's a filter there. There will be um, a couple sediment filters, four of them. As a matter of fact, it'll be connected off of this end. They'll fit right here. We're going to show you how to do the poor man's water purification system. It's essentially, you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, and purchase uh, UV lights, light fixtures with a bulb and everything, and you just, I'm going to show you how to use this um, foil and build a UV light chamber for purifying water. So it's a poor man's purification system. Um, I'm also showing you some other purification systems. Um, in a survival situation, it could become kind of important if you're going to store water to know how to properly store it. I recommend you get a Dell Zone Eclipse type um, water um, ozonator. It ozonates the water and injects it into a fitting. Now with that kind of a system you have to circulate your water. So if you're going to store water it will get stagnant. Essentially you could take redwood barrels like this and store water in them. Um, the thing is a new barrel of redwood is going to have tannic acid. That's what keeps it from rotting. 
and the water will actually look like root beer. Now this tub here is probably 10 years old. So tannic acid is pretty much leached out. It's a great shape. It's all clear redwood. Um, it's well made. Um, good cooperage. All the joints are nice. It's even got a, a, a tongue and groove in it, a small one. Um, good tub, man. These are hard, hard, hard to come by. Um, there's cedar tubs, there's oak tubs, there's teak tubs. I've been doing hot tubs for 32 years now. So, but anyhow, I'm kind of giving you some info and, you know, you look at this as a hot tub, you can look at it as other things as well. Essentially, this could be a barrel and it could be plastic and it could be storage, thermal storage in your basement. 